Over the last year, Intel versus AMD, especially for gaming, has been debated and argued so much that I realized that I needed to do something and go to another level. I needed to bust out the 1000 FPS camera and also my hacked up mouse, which I made a tutorial for, and I put an LED light on it, and this enables me to get more information that we've otherwise not had out in the scene, because I really wanted to answer the question of why does Intel perform better in games than the AMD Ryzen CPUs? And I noticed a weird phenomenon too, and that was when I tested the i5-8400 and compared it against the Ryzen 7 2600X, and I overclocked that Ryzen system to 4.1 gigahertz, and it was still losing to the i5-8400 at 3.8 gigahertz. And this was a little bit confusing because especially in the Cinebench score, you had a higher single threaded score on the Ryzen system. So not everything relates to a Cinebench score. That's the first thing I realized. But also today, we're going to be taking a look at the top dogs from both sides. The i7-8700K, which is hailed as the king of gaming. And we're going to compare that against the Ryzen 7 2700X at 4.2 GHz. And we're using the same motherboard from the same company, Gigabyte. We're also using the same memory, exact same memory, with the exact same XMP profiles on both systems, as well as the same power supply and the same SSD, which was reformatted in the same GTX 1080 Ti. So let's find out what we discover here. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And the first game we're going to pull up for you guys is CSGO. And in this result, we got the best frame possible on the 8700K for all the testing here too. That was nine milliseconds. Worst frame was 21 milliseconds. Average over 10 runs was 15.4 milliseconds. Moving over to the AMD side of things, we had 10 to 24 milliseconds. So only slightly better on the Intel side. It's a, on average roughly a one millisecond gain from both these CPUs. But when we look at the FPS numbers, they do uh, show a big difference between the Intel system and the AMD system. So you are scoring quite a significant advantage. And this was the most responsive game out of all the games I tested here today. And you're gonna see a bit of a correlation happening as we move over to the next game. And that is Ashes of the Singularity. Best frame here was 33 milliseconds. Worst frame was 42 milliseconds. Averaged out at 37.3. Move over to the Intel side of things. 31 milliseconds best frame. Worst frame was actually 43 and that averaged out at 36 milliseconds. So we did see an advantage of 1.3 milliseconds on average. And what we're seeing here with the FPS on this game was the Intel was beating the AMD system by a little bit. But when we look over that Ryzen 5 system versus the i5-8400, this was where the Ryzen 5 did score a victory. But ironically enough, this was the slowest game out of all the games I tested here today. In other words, the engine wasn't as responsive. So you do an action, the output of it is going to be delayed compared to competitive multiplayer titles like CSGO, for example. But moving over to the next game we had here, Dota 2, a very popular MOBA. Here on the Intel side, we had the best case scenario being 17 milliseconds, worst case scenario being 31. This averaged out at 27.4 milliseconds. And then we look at the AMD side, we got 21 to 33 milliseconds, averaging out at 29. The FPS in this game also did favor the Intel. And we look at the difference in FPS, it wasn't a huge difference but again, with Dota 2, it wasn't as responsive as CSGO or even some of the other titles that I'm going to be pulling up for you guys. And moving over to GTA 5, we saw the 8700K have a best case scenario of 15 milliseconds. Worst case was 25 milliseconds. This averaged out to 21 0.2 milliseconds. Moving over to the AMD side of things, this had a best case scenario of 16 milliseconds, worst case scenario of 27, averaging out to 23.3 milliseconds. When we look at the FPS difference, it does again favor the 8700K when we do lower the graphical settings to specifically stress the CPU to give you guys the data that you wanna know. But interestingly enough, sometimes the FPS in GTA 5 is too high that apparently according to the game developers, can break the engine. And what this does with the 0.1% lows, that's your anomaly frames, makes them uh, lower than uh, CPUs that aren't scoring as high an average FPS. And next up here, we've got Overwatch, a very competitive multiplayer online FPS from Blizzard. Now, Blizzard are very well known for optimizing their titles, especially for PC. Ryzen does score very well here, 
getting 279 average FPS versus the Intel CPU, which is closing in at 300 FPS. It is worth noting, however, this game does have a 300 FPS cap. But when we look at the millisecond times here, the best case scenario for the 2700X was 17 milliseconds, worst case was 34, and we scored an average of 24.8. Moving over to the Intel side of things, we got a best case scenario of 15 and a worst case of 31 and the average was 21.9 milliseconds. And with this game in particular, we'll just, I guess, never know how much extra FPS the 8700K could have got. Uh, though not to worry, I did decide to throw in one more curveball to all this testing because I wanted to know how Far Cry 5 ran, which is in the past, Far Cry Primal has shown heavily skewed results to especially the ring bus CPU, not exactly Intel CPUs because the mesh architecture i9, for example, doesn't do anywhere near as well as the 8700K. And this game did again skew the results heavily to Intel. We saw 180 average FPS with a minimum of 150 versus 138 with a minimum of 114. Now, when it came to the uh, results, this was quite a responsive game. However, the average milliseconds here was 28.1 on the AMD side versus 24.9 on the Intel side. So that FPS difference was making a difference in terms of the actual input lag itself with the worst frame on AMD being 20 milliseconds, best frame being 34 milliseconds. Then on the Intel side, it was 17 milliseconds. Then the worst case scenario being 27 milliseconds. So now, of course, you're probably sitting on your chair and wondering, what does all this data mean, Brian? Well, I'm going to try my best to explain it. I couldn't find a heavy correlation between the game's responsiveness and how well a CPU performs in that particular game, though the data did suggest slightly that the more laggier a game is, the better an AMD CPU will perform in relation to an Intel CPU. Though the more responsive a game engine is, in general, the better an Intel ring bus CPU will perform. And I put an emphasis on ring bus. That's like the eighth generation 8700K, 8400, and 8100, for example. They are the ring bus architecture. The i9s, for example, are the mesh architecture. And what we've got here with the 8700K is something that is so snappy, yet still has six cores and 12 threads. Now, on average, we are seeing the numbers showing that it does perform better and not just FPS, but also the total input lag itself. So if you're a competitive gamer, of course, one or two milliseconds probably isn't going to matter a whole lot. But if you add that up over all your gear, if it's two milliseconds here, two milliseconds there, two milliseconds everywhere, it will probably make a difference in tournaments especially. So it's just one of those extra things to think about if you are a competitive gamer. You do want to get the utmost highest FPS possible but you don't want to be doing it to the extent where you're wasting too much time. And I guess that's where guys like me come in who love doing these tests, love the hardware and seeing what it's all about. So if I had to make a recommendation, it would be that both CPUs I featured here are absolutely fine for gaming. However, one does have an edge over the other. And it's because of its architecture, not just its IPC. When we look at the uh, Cinebench scores, for example, there's actually a bit more to it in that the latencies on the CPUs themselves are so important. And the fastest CPU out at the moment is the 8700K. And that's what my results have showed here today. And this is why it's the gaming king, because when a program or a game, for example, that requires lower latencies, takes advantage of a CPU like an 8700K, then it's going to perform better in games. And I'd say arguably a competitive gamer is the person who needs that higher FPS as opposed to someone who's just casually playing on a 1080p monitor. They're not really going to notice the difference. They're not really going to care. But if you are that competitive pro and you are playing for money, then it might be worth your time re-watching this video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions. I'm probably sure you have a lot of questions. I'm just new to this testing. I find it fascinating. I'm gonna be testing many more things because imagine if you've got a one to two millisecond difference in games, when it comes to things like Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, if you're editing a video and you're saving two milliseconds on every single action you do, and you're doing 60 actions per minute, for example, that's going to amount to time saved over the course of you editing your video. And that's one thing we don't do as benchmarkers when we do those numbers, the final render times. We don't take into account the actual live action and the time you could save there. So maybe things weren't just all in my head in the past when I said, the 8700K or the Intel CPUs felt snappier. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.